Margaret Sinclair, Sister Mary Frances of the Five Wounds. Last Days. The priest had to go north again, and on his way back, he called to see Sister Mary Frances. Her eyelids were drooping, and she looked distinctly exhausted, hardly able to speak. The Sister of Charity entreated him to stay longer than the short quarter of an hour he had done before. How are you, child? Quite happy, father. Does our Lord still make himself present to you? He is always with me. And you just let him do what he pleases? Yes. Very well, child. But you will not forget, child, that your holiness consists in doing just what you are told for love of him no father does anyone else speak to you our lady what do you call her mother is it often when he hides himself she comes to comfort me anyone else saint joseph once i was very surprised because i had no special devotion to him it was when my cough was very bad in the night. Anyone else? My angel guardian helps me to keep awake in the morning and prepare myself for Holy Communion when I have been very bad at night. Father, is it the same to hear the Mass from the room here? I can hear the bell. Just the same, child. Every Mass is said in the name of and for all Catholics who want to join themselves to it. So, you can join yourself to all the masses throughout the world. A radiant smile lit up her face. Now, child, our Lord may hide himself from you for a wee while. You will not worry, will you? He is always there, all the same in the depths of your soul, is he not? You remember what the little flower used to say, how behind the fog, even the black fog, there is always the sun shining, and he can come through any time he likes. So you will not trouble yourself if he hides himself. Father, I want to see him whispered the child with intense eagerness which showed through her drooping eyelids that's right child but you are not to be anxious about it just leave it to him whenever he wants yes father i am detached from my mother also i do not want her to come down again and father, is it right to love the convent very much? What do you mean? I would like to go back to the convent, and there should be more convents, and girls should know of it, and have more vocations. Very well, child. That is quite all right. Our Lord gave you the convent, did he not? And so he wants you to wish to go back to it? And it is our Lord whom you would like to be loved more in the convent, is it not? So do not be afraid, child. Love the convent with all your heart. Is there anything else you would like me to do for you? I am quite happy, father. You will not forget, child. Whoever goes home first will look after the other. And she nodded assent. Benedictio Dei Omnipotentes Patris et Filio et Spiritu Sancti descendat super te et manet semper. Amen. The priests who saw her and the Sisters of Charity marvelled at this heroic young daughter of St. Francis. Several times I wondered where her faults were. I failed to discover any and I saw her under great trials 
and sufferings, physical and otherwise. She was indeed a marvel. I thought gratitude shone very conspicuously in her, also calm, cheerful resignation to the will of God, whatever that was, also great confidence and humility, and many others, selflessness, simplicity, etc. I feared sometimes I caused her pain by bringing in nuns or sisters who were passing to visit her, to have a look at her, or a word with her. She never betrayed the slightest impatience, but had always a smile and a promise of prayers for them. I noticed that all who approached her seemed to be struck, priests especially. Bishop O'Farrell from Australia went in to bless her on the eve of her death and whispered very earnestly to her. On coming out of the room, I said, That is a wonderful soul, my lord. Yes, he replied. You can see it in her face and eyes. I came across a note from Father K. S. J. in which he sends remembrance to this one and that among the sick, then to the sweet little Violet, poor Claire. He doesn't even remember her name, but does not forget her sanctity. Her obedience was perfect. I might have been her abbess. She never seemed to question what I said. Father M. J. W. of Brentwood wrote to the priest, saying, She was always suffering, always cheerful, never seemed in the least depressed, and edified all around her by her most exemplary patience and resignation. She wanted nothing but to do the will of God, and I could only marvel how one so young could have attained to such a degree of heroic virtue. As you know, it is almost a universal concomitant of the disease from which she suffered to be dissatisfied and hard to please. But Sister Frances never showed the least sign of impatience. She never asked for any relief. She was perfectly resigned to the will of God, and during the time I knew her, she simply waited with patience the certain summons of death. She was evidently a most privileged soul, and must have been most faithful to the call she received from God to dedicate herself to his service. She had the real spirit of her order and probably did more by her hidden life than many others have done in a long and active life among men.